Let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, any of you who knows me or knows my family, you know that we are big Chicago sports fans. I was the first person in my family not to be born in the Chicagoland area. So we grew up cheering for the Bears, the Bulls, the Cubs, the Blackhawks, you name it. And unfortunately, with the exception of like the Blackhawks of the 2000s and the one time that the Cubs won the World Series, the, none of the Chicago sports franchise, franchises have really been good in my lifetime, which is very unfortunate, especially because the one we care about the most, the Bears, have been the worst of all of them. But but the truth is the Chicago sports franchises really have a storied history that they've produced some really remarkable teams. Think of the 1990s Bulls. I mean, like they're just one of the greatest NBA dynasties of all time. Or, or think of you'd be hard pressed to find like a more captivating football team than the 1985 Bears, right? Like they just captured America's heart. They just like enthralled the nation at that time. And both of those franchises were led by two of like the greatest of all time, Michael Jordan. You can't mention the Bulls, let alone basketball, without mentioning his name. And for the for the 85 Bears, their running back, Walter Payton. He just would churn through defenses and leap over piles, and he was just, like, exciting to watch. And the thing about it is, is both of those men, they were married, they had families, and like most kids, their kids grew up wanting to be like their parents. Jeffrey Jordan hoped to make it big in the NBA. Jarrett Payton hoped to make it big in the NFL. But... How many of you have ever heard of Jeffrey Jordan or Jarrett Payton? My guess is not many, but my guess is all of you have heard of Michael Jordan and Walter Payton. And why is that? Well, it's because Jarrett Payton, he was an undrafted free agent signed by the Tennessee Titans, didn't even last a year, then went to try to play in NFL Europe. And Jeffrey Jordan, he played for the University of Illinois, but he didn't even make it to the NBA draft. He never made it beyond college. And why might that be? Well, I'll be honest with you. I've never met either man, if you can believe that. And I don't want to put things on them, but it's it's a reasonable assumption to a, to a certain extent that perhaps there's some entitlement, that perhaps there's that idea that like who I am, my name will get me where I need to go. When in reality, what got their parents where they needed to go? Well, Michael Jordan was famously cut from his high school basketball team. And so he made a determined effort that he would work harder than anybody else so he could be better than anybody else. And he was greatest of all time, better than LeBron James. And Walter Payton, well, my brothers have this poster in their bedroom of Payton's Hill. It's this famous hill in Arlington Heights, Illinois, that's now on a golf course. And Walter Payton would do sprint after sprint after sprint up this hill and challenge others to stick with him for a workout. And he'd do it until he'd throw up or pass out. And this is what enabled his legs to like churn through defenses, to leap over these piles of people, right? Like, it's what enabled him to be the greatest running back in Chicago Bears history and one of the greatest of all time in the NFL. That both of these men, they didn't have their careers handed to them. They worked for it. And the problem is, I think a lot of times you and I allow that attitude of entitlement to creep into our lives, right? That too often I have athletes who expect like some kind of reward or pat on the back because you showed up to practice every day. Dude, you're supposed to. You made a commitment. Come on now. Keep your commitments like that. That You don't deserve anything for that. That's what you're supposed to do. Or the, or the students that I have who, you know, you guys turn in all your work and you turn it in on time. That's what you're supposed to do. Like, I'm not giving you a reward for that. Like, you're going to be penalized if you don't do that. And I think sometimes this attitude of entitlement that we deserve certain things can even creep into our relationship with God. And in today's gospel, we are, we're given this beautiful like vignette to kind of depict this because it's the healing of the centurion's servant. And what's really beautiful is the Jewish people, they come to Jesus and they're like, hey, the centurion, his servant is ill. And like, you should heal him because he deserves to have you do this. He's entitled. He deserves this. But notice it's not the centurion feeling entitled for himself. It's other people. And there's something kind of beautiful about that, that they're so appreciative that this Roman is a supporter of the Jewish people. How crazy that they're like, yeah, he deserves this. But the centurion is one of the few people ever in all of the Gospels to be praised by Jesus. And guys, think of how incredible that is, that you're remembered in the Gospels as somebody Jesus praised. That's exceptional. And he's praised by Jesus. Why? Well, because he's, he's somebody who says, no, no, Jesus, you don't owe me anything. I'm not entitled to anything. I'm not worthy. 
I don't deserve this any more than anybody else. You owe me nothing. And it's this attitude that Jesus praises beyond all else, that he says, never in Israel have I found such faith, right? And I think that this is a really important lesson for us, that God doesn't owe you anything. And the sooner you realize this, the better and the happier you'll be. Why? Well, because as soon as you realize that God owes you nothing, then you'll stop trying to control God. You'll just stop trying to be God for God, right? And when you allow God to be God, then you'll start to recognize that like, oh, God doesn't owe me anything. So I don't need to be frustrated at God all the time. Instead, like you recognize, oh, so then everything that I do have, God didn't owe to me. So it's all a gift. And this leads to gratitude. And gratitude leads to joy. And joy is captivating the same way that Michael Jordan and Walter Payton are captivating, right? There's something about it that's just catching, that like draws people in, that as Christians, we're supposed to be those people, those people who like make others wonder like, well, what do they have that I don't? And you know what we have? We have God. And because you have God, you have everything else along with it. St. Paul tells us this, like that you are Christ and Christ is God. So all is yours. And all is gift. And it's this awareness that God didn't owe me anything. And yet he gave me everything that allows us to experience God in our lives. Because I think for so many people, there's a dearth of experience of God in our lives that you and I tend to feel like, well, I don't know. I, I mean, I know God's real, but like, have we experienced God? I really truly believe that one of the ways for you to open your heart to experience God is to recognize that God doesn't owe you anything. Because I was taught in college that the, the test for an experience of God is an experience of mercy. And what's mercy? It's love that's not deserved. And when you and I recognize that everything we have is undeserved gift, then this enables us to be like, wow, blown away by our experience of God. That God owes us nothing, and yet he's given, given us everything. And that should leave us awed and fill our hearts with gratitude and joy. So with that, let's go ahead and conclude uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.